Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good vibes, good energy, good people. It's your boy Mickey Fenton, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe. Right now. Also, if you want to support the brand, it's inspired by dreams.shop. And it's a preppy streetwear brand I'm building with you guys, the community. Okay. Today's episode, this is something that people, not a lot of people in the black culture, not a lot of people in hip hop, not a lot of people in general like to talk about this. And it's the crabs in the barrel syndrome. I see a lot of people, they don't even realize when they're doing this. And it's just that whole, if somebody else try, is trying to make it, you're trying to pull them down or you're trying to steal something from them that they're trying to do. And it's it's a whole bunch of remixing when it comes to hip hop and it comes to people's ideas and the things that people cherish. So I wanted to bring this to you guys and to show people that it's not about pointing the finger at anybody else. You have to take a look at yourself and stop being a crab in the barrel and get yourself in a place where your mindset and the love that you have for other people can match up. So let's just jump right into it. And for the people with this crabs in the barrel mentality, man, stay away from us. That's low vibrational energy that is not allowed in these spaces. Let's get it. Mickey made it. Mickey made what you made, Mickey. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. Morning message, good morning. Ladies, some of these men don't even realize that the reason that they can't get ahead in life is because they come from a family with a crabs in a barrel mentality. See, his family want him to do good, but not better than the rest of them. Especially if they're miserable in their marriages and relationships, they're gonna behave like crabs in a barrel. If they see that you have potential to level him up better than anyone else in the family has ever, they will break your relationship up and you're gonna find out if he's weak enough to allow it. Stay away from men with crabs in a barrel. Anybody that... And for another example, certain spaces, when you see the people that they get to these spaces, it's kind of like the place where you guys are fighting for, the, the pulling each other down from, it's not even that high. It's it's crazy. Wait to say something that they got to say about you or, you know what I'm saying, bring you up during a time when you are really flourishing, been hating on you. They just been waiting for you to rise to bring you back down. It's the crab in a barrel mentality. Because why couldn't you do that all along? Why are you wait until that person rise to do it? It just says a lot about your character. Because anytime that you have to wait until somebody is doing well to bring them down, just means that you a hater and you never want to see that person shine to begin with. <clears throat> People like that I don't trust because and then on top of it, if they're getting shine off of your name because they see that you're doing good, they were just waiting for that so that they could put themselves in a better position. They never fucked with you. They was always a hater of you. And you probably did a lot for them. And those are the type of people that would do it to you. The people that you did a lot for and they know your potential. They're going to wait till it's time for you to shine. That's when they're going to say some fucked up shit to try to bring you back down. Crab in a barrel mentality. Trust me. I don't trust those type of people. And those type of people don't deserve nothing because they didn't work for it. They just wanted to shine off of your name. That's a fact. Facts, facts. So anytime you see people doing stuff like that, most likely those people are negative, toxic people, might even be narcissistic people. It's black women. It's a crabs in a barrel mentality. Man. Let me tell you something. I've had people come to me and ask me who my chemist is. Yeah. Who did my branding? Yeah. How I'm doing it. And guess what? I gave them all the you resources. Gave it. Yeah. I can give you the recipe. Yeah. I can give you the juice. It yeah. won't come out the same. Yeah. Baby, and that's, that's my okay. favorite line. I share everything. That's I say okay. that to Ash all yeah. the time. I swear, bro, a lot of you niggas be crabs in a bucket, bro. A lot of you niggas be crabs in a bucket, bro. Bro, you niggas be mad because a nigga ain't going through what y'all going through. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You see a nigga doing better in life, a nigga ain't going through certain shit you were going through, you automatically think a nigga a fuck, nigga a pussy, nigga. Maybe the nigga made the right decision so he ain't gotta go through that shit, bruh. I think being broke cool, I think nigga catching charges cool, I think being in and out of jail, losing relationships, bruh. 
Fucking up in life is, is all right, cuz. Like, come on, bro. That shit be crazy. You niggas be crabs in the bucket, bro. You see a nigga going up, you want to put a nigga down. You see a nigga going down, you, he straight. He a real nigga. That shit crazy, bro. So, crab in a barrel mentality is basically when you come from a area, a situation, a family, a neighborhood, when individuals within that community, um, Sometimes they might fake support you. Sometimes they might support you in hiding, but not in not in public. They don't want people to see that they support you. But crab in a barrel basically means like, I, I, I will allow you to get a, to a certain point, but I'm gonna pull you down. I don't wanna see you gr grow. I don't wanna see you become the best version of yourself, even though you have the potential to get out of this bucket. So when you put crabs in a barrel, what do they do? They step on each other to get to the top, but nobody ever gets out because they keep trying to step on each other so, and they just keep falling down. They all stay in that barrel. They never reach their full potential. They never get out of that barrel. That's why people call it crab in a barrel mentality. So when you come from the hood, when you come from areas where a lot of people have jealousy and, and insecurities and they don't work on themselves, or they don't want to become the best version of themselves, they look at everybody around them as competition. That's a fact. Facts, facts. You know what I'm saying? And that happens in the hood very often. That happens in dysfunctional families very often. That crab in the barrel mentality. So most of the time, the only way you can like, um, deal with that is to separate yourself from that. You gotta separate yourself from people who you consider your family or your friends because nine times out of 10, they don't want what's best for you. And a lot of people can fake it very easy. Oh, I got you, bro. I got you, sis. You feel what I'm saying? But they real sneaky with it or they talking behind your back and, and they don't want what's best for you and stuff like that, so. That's a fact. Fact, facts. I feel like your best bet it's to step out of the barrel. Most people can't because they think that that's their cousin, that's their uncle, that's their sister. And it's like, if you blinded to it, you're going to get stuck in that barrel with everybody else. Talk about that, though, in specifics of why you think it's so hard for people to help and to surround somebody that is trying to build something and, and really help them build something. It's a crab in a barrel mentality. Yeah. Some people just built off survival. So if I'm, if I'm living to survive, I don't want you to eat where I'm eating. Mm. Yeah. I was just raised off love and survive. I know how to survive and love. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference with today's culture. That whole survival mode, you know, you're raised to survive. It's like, that's a, it's, it's a sad thing when you have to try to just, you're just surviving because the way you treat people, the way you see things, everything from that point on is just totally off. A lot of people don't got that love. A lot of people too scared of somebody going, going above them. Hey guys, so I have a little story to give y'all, right? So y'all know that I'm opening my business in Guyana, right? My storefront in Guyana. And my... Okay, what she's about to get into, for those who don't know, because she has a West Indian accent, I understand, of course, because I'm Bayesian. But for those, what she's about to break down is that she is opening a opening up a new um shop and there's people hating on her and not giving her the right advice and this happens a lot in hip-hop it happens a lot in business just people not wanting to, to lead you in the right direction because they feel like you might go further than they went even though that <clears throat> as black people there's only so much we can go but we'll do we'll save that for another um episode let's get it so we never open us yet y'all and the fight down is real. So, I leave Guyana probably about about 20 years or so. So, one thing about me, I never try to lose my accent because I always tell myself that is the closest thing I have to home. I, my boys, everything they live here, my kids live here and everything, right? And recently I started to go back home frequent. So, of course, I love Trinidad. But I also love Guyana. Guyana is where I'm from. That's where the heart is. I remember when me and my husband went to Dubai the other day. And person was asked, um, where you from, where you from? So, you know, he would say, we from Trinidad, we from Trinidad, whatever. And five minutes after I catch myself, hey, Mina, no, 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 I from Guyana. So they're trying to understand what's Guyana. They're trying to sell Guyana, tell them what's Guyana is known for, whatever, whatever. But, you know, few people know about Guyana in Dubai, whatever, right? So, so the thing come back to, right? I have my um, my business here, whatever. Trinidad become um, Guyana is like a next place of income or whatever. But the thing is it, right? How do you guys 
get by with the fight dog in Guyana? How do you guys get by? Is like you know, like sm you have a small business there. Of course, I'm not gonna be fighting huh? because it's human being at the end of the day, right? But Jesus Christ, I find it's too much in Guyana. Like yo, like you block your own blessings by fighting on the other person. You understand? Try to focus on you. You try to do your thing. You is you, I is me, or whatever, right? You, you're selling your hair, your weave, your whatever. Somebody else selling hair and weave. One thing I always tell my students. Don't study, but the market being saturated with whatever. You focus on you. You take in your knowledge. You practice. You do your stuff. This year, last year, I, I didn't get a chance to do no classes. The year before, I did some classes, probably about 10 classes or so. I had about like 10 to 12 students. And believe me, you, out of that batch of students, 10 of them is doing their own thing. And they already have the business established. They're making a six-figure. They're doing their own thing. Now, if I had studied... Now nah, I can't teach them my uh, my knowledge because you know what? They're gonna open their own business and they're gonna make their own money and they're gonna take my customer and the money will be nah. Mm -mm. You don't think like that, you don't go gatekeep and you do not block your blessings. No, we all need to know about me now. Ain't nobody could stop me from doing what I doing. The only person I rely on and who could stop me is God. And he ain't about to do that no time soon. You understand? He ain't about to do that no time soon so you guys keep like you know with the negative shit but it's just like you know i just give it a little five minutes because i find it just unbelievable that i open as yet and the shit starts so but i'm about to go in full in full work mode like you know like come on if you need a tip or two ask me i will tell you um if i find like you should share your knowledge you understand whether you want to whether you want a person to pay for it or you give it away free or whatever you have to know your limits your boundary but the moral of the story do not block your blessings this is for like business person or whether you have a business or not do not block your blessings you doing the, these things gonna block your blessings um focus on yourself try to better yourself better your craft better your product better whatever and don't block your blessings you and as of me, like, you know, y'all can't stop me. Mm -mm. Mm. Not everybody's trying to be a crab in the barrel. Sometimes when you ask people for help or go to people for information, sometimes people share all that they know and give insight and details into <clears throat> what's you know within the parameters of what they can and can't do and what they you know are able to help you with sometimes people stand on those parameters and accept them as law and fact um, but the truth is that may be law and fact in your world but I don't live in your world I'm just going to you to help me be to where I need to be and if you can't help me cool thank you for your time and if you can I would hope that you will but if you truly can't and you are operating within these limitations, then, you know, the best thing you can do for me is let me know that you're operating within these limitations and direct me to who can assist me and not in a way of, you know, being condescending or overstepping. Let's partner together. I can't help you, but let me direct you to someone who can be of assistance even if i feel like i know that the answer is going to be you know no or they can't really give you insight you don't know what people know right you know for example with my kids when my daughter's babysitting right and my son goes to her and asks for permission to do things that are outside of the parameter of what she's able to give permission for him to do for example stay up later have access to you know a second helping of desserts or the the go outside the house or you know stuff like that she does not have the authority to say yay or nay on that subject what she will respond with is no mama said da 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 mom said this because that was in her parameters and i respect her for knowing her parameters right and she will defend her response to the to the death you know because she knows what will happen otherwise you know now in the same regard i respect her honoring those parameters i also have a respect for my son who will be like in some cases all right you can't give me an answer to this i'm gonna go ask mom 
And so he will. He will say, okay, Maya said I can't do this because you told her that I can't do this. So let's have a conversation, mom. Is it true that I can't do this or do I have any options? I respect his courage. I respect him, you know, having the um, courage, if you will, to come and face, you know, someone who is, can make dis decisions, can you know, uh, step into a place where we can create options and opportunities for something we was originally told no for. And so some people aren't, you know, some people, because now there are people out there trying to drag you down and don't want to see you win because that's a reflection of, you know, their uh, insecurities within self and that's between them and their therapist. But for those, some other people, they just don't have the authority. And, you know, sometimes people offer up kindness or kind gestures or offer to help. Um, and not all help is good help. Not all help is a true reflection of that person's authority. Because if that person has to then go ask, you know, but can't genuinely say, I'm 100% confident that I can help you with this, that's not help that you want. Because then that gets that person caught up in a little something that they are offering help and support and truly had no authority to do so, right? Um, so if there is somebody who's offering a big help and a big adjustment and the question is hey if i say yes to this favor to this gesture will you get in trouble is this something that's out of alignment with your company policy or is this something that could you know if everybody on the team knew about it could jeopardize things for both you and i and if the answer is mm, you know mm, you know they kind of give you a wink you know sometimes people will register that as oh good looking out and sometimes the good looking out may lead to unemployment or you looking like someone who was trying to you know not honor something that was in place right and then now it looks like you are not operating with integrity right some gestures of kindness will challenge you to step outside of things that you believe in things that you value ways that you want to conduct yourself just to gain access and it's truly not access it's just the offer of access or the um the gesture disguises access when in actuality this person didn't have authority to even offer that. And so it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to say no to kind acts, to appreciate them wanting to help make things easier. But to say, no, I will wait in line. No, I'll go through the process that you have in place. No, I'll, I'll check back in with whoever, you know, if the person truly doesn't have authority. And it's also, I feel okay to say, okay, so cool. You're saying that those are my options. Um, who can, who else can I talk to, to maybe to see if I can explore other options? I think that's fair as well. You know, I definitely feel like I was raised to, you know, not challenge authority, not talk back. A curiosity was a bad thing. But in actuality, I feel like, yes, reckless curiosity can lead to some you know sideways things but curiosity plus wisdom can open doors and how do you tap into that wisdom sometimes engaging in that <laughs> reckless curiosity falling down you know believing people you shouldn't believe accepting gestures and favors that you shouldn't have but you don't know what you don't know right and so wisdom plus curiosity can open doors and allow you to create opportunities that you didn't know you had access to um, because you didn't ask. So, you know, before you condemn someone in, you know, certain positions of authority, seeming authority, or condemn, some, condemn someone who really truly couldn't help when you thought they could, you know, I want you to take a look at it. Perhaps they are only operating within the parameters of their authority and sometimes people only operate within the parameters of their mentality or their emotional capacity you know or you know their lens of life and can't provide even insight or support that you need you know and these relationships we go to our partners and be like oh can you you know emotionally and mentally support me but you're talking to somebody who's only operating within their capacity and haven't taken the time to develop a skill set that would be beneficial to support you in you know your time of need whatever that may be 
if they have limitations, you know, definitely don't want to be on the receiving end of mistreatment or be on the receiving end of not getting needs met. What it does is, you know, give you permission to recognize, oh, dang, there's some limitations there. Let's figure out a way for us to create some options. Who do we need to talk to? People who help people expand their limitations, you know, with mental, emotional and mental um, blockages or stunting or traumas or whatever the case may be. And what I've discovered about life, you always have options. You know, even if it is, you know, I'm going to take this information, put it in the wisdom bank and I know for next time or I need to give myself permission to ask more questions. So that's it. That's all I got. Some of y'all got in y'all feelings about that whole the realtor post that I made. Listen, people have to get out that crab in the barrel mentality. So, if, so if you recommend somebody to one of your friends that's a realtor to uh, buy a house or run a house, and they get a commission, you worrying about how much they get, how much they're gonna give you. I didn't know that in the state of South Carolina. I don't know if somebody correct me if I'm wrong. That if you're a realtor and I'm a non-realtor, that even though I recommend you to 20 people that got houses. You can't give me none of that money that you make. But I was told is that if I get my realtor's license, that I, I don't even have to sell a house. I can just do referrals. So if I got any realtors out there, please correct me if I'm wrong. But from my understanding, I was told that I don't really have to sell a house. If I don't think I want to do is referrals, I can do referrals and make money. So if you are constantly, you know, people that's moving and you would just want to do referrals, just do that. Because from my understanding, you can have a friend that's in Washington State that's getting ready to move there. And you can refer them to a, a realtor there. And that realtor up there, once you know, you, I guess when you put in the system or whatever to get that referral for it, you get some of that um, that commission. So, no, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, you know, we got friends out here that's trying to feed their trying to feed their families. And we got people out here that, that's trying to keep it from that. So me, I refer plenty of people to get housed and never ask for a, a nothing back. You know, I'm helping a friend. So that's just me, because I don't have that bag in a barrel, bag, uh, crab in a, Mentality. So I just got off the phone with a resume client and he just made a great point about people. When you're trying to climb the career ladder, a lot of people around you may have that crab in a barrel mentality. In other words, while you're trying to climb, they're steady trying to pull you down from being successful. This client just landed a new job with a $25,000 salary increase. And he's coming back to me to get an even bigger promotion. And his friend is saying, why do you want to use a resume writer? And he said he told his friend because this guy helped me land a $25,000 salary increase. So be careful because everybody can't go where you're going. Like I say all the time, high achievers use resume writers, coaches, consultants, and advisors. That's just what high achievers do. Once you learn the principle of investing in yourself, you separate yourself from 90% of the population. So invest in yourself. Okay. Wow. From this, from what I hear in these conversations, this type of mindset is drawn from somebody from just not having much or not being able to do the same or doing better. And they harbor these types of feelings inside and they want to pull you down when you're going up. And what people don't understand, everybody deals with their own problems. And sometimes money is not the problem. Maybe it might be something else or, you know, something. There's always something in there that's going to try to, you know, get in the way of what you have to do. And when it comes to your own people, it's sad. It's sick. It's the type of mentality that makes me understand why it's so hard for people to come together and build than just go out there. And I see people choosing the easy route to destroy it but no matter how you look at it no matter how high you think you're going it's not really high if you're the only ones there until next time it's your boy mickey fenty aka mickey made it if you're new to this channel you know what to do to this channel subscribe